All right, so welcome everyone. This is day 24 of SOC 30 days challenge. If you haven't joined the challenge yet, you can you can find the link in the description below. This is about introduction to malware analysis. This is going to be quite basics, but very, very helpful with some new tools, okay? Malware analysis. Malware analysis is basically a process of, let me maximize it a little, yeah. So malware analysis is basically a process of, uh, you know, testing a malware sample. The goal is to understand its origin, uh, who crafted it, uh, who, what's the behavior of the malware, what's the impact and what are the different indicators that are uh, embedded in the malware sample. Okay, this is very much helpful uh, for every SOC analyst or uh, malware analyst or uh, DFIR engineer called digital forensic and incident response. Okay, there are mainly three types of malware and analysis technique, but in general, we can also say four. First, which is very, very common, is static malware analysis. This is where we examine the malware sample without even executing it. Okay, so this is quite safe. You don't actually run the malware sample. So you are safe, but you don't get a lot of information. Some of the information will still be hidden. Then it comes dynamic analysis. This is where you observe and, and, and examine the file behavior, malware sample behavior uh, during its execution. So, But as you can imagine, if it get executed, this may hamper your system. That's the reason it should be done in a very, very closed environment right secure environment that's called sandboxing okay and the machine has to be completely isolated okay and there are multiple tools available um, the, there are multiple enterprise uh, tools available as well like cloud sandbox solutions like a uh, wildfire uh, by uh, palo alto there are some uh, sandboxing solution available by checkpoint as well there are some open source solutions like cuckoo as well um, there are some SaaS based solution by uh, any run and uh, threat zone as well. We'll cover that up. Don't worry. Then we have memory analysis where we investigate the memory artifacts, uh, malware art artifacts in the memory itself. So whenever a malware get executed, it also leaves some footprint in the memory, right? So when we examine the uh, memory, examine the memory dump, that's where uh, we analyze the malware samples, malware artifacts, right? Next, we have reverse engineering. It is quite advanced. This is where we actually decode, we deconstruct the entire code, entire source code itself. It's quite advanced, okay? Next, we have key objective. What, what are different objective of malware analysis? We identify the type of malware. You can see if it is a Trojan, ransomware, uh, info stealer. We determine how it spreads. It, it is, is, it, is it get spread through the uh, email, USB download, or any specific vulnerability? We understand its behavior, like it's just the file modification, network connection, it, is it persistent in nature, it is sticky in nature, that even if you uh, restart your machine, is it still connected with the command and control center? Next, we extract the IOCs. IOCs are indicator of compromise, okay? Like artifacts that shows that your machine is compromised, right? So this could be hashes, domain uh, name, IP address, registry key, and many more. Then it also help us in detection and prevention in future, okay? So based on those artifacts, we can create Yara rules, which can help us to find out the similar kind of malware in future, okay? This also definitely help in the incident response process. Let's understand this lab is uh, will be more focused on static malware analysis, but let's understand what do we do in the static malware analysis. Remember, this is done without executing the malware right so we find out the uh, we first calculate the file hash so every any kind of a data maybe it's a video in a uh, text image anything we can get the uh, fixed length uh, string and that's called file hash this could be a md5 or sha256 as well now you may wonder why do we need this because you see 
uh, if we have a sort of a string, if we have a hash value of any file, it's not necessarily a malware, but it can be about anything. I can now I can now compare it with any of the malware in the world with that hash file because if something has been changed in that malware, the entire hash value changes. If the malware remain as it is, we, I can identify you know if it has been impacted by anybody else as well. So the antivirus company will report it with the you know will also uh, make a flag uh, trigger a flag for any other system, right? So first thing that we do is we collect the file hash and then we submit to virus total or any uh, any uh, threat intelligence feeds as well. Then we check the antivirus detection. We inspect the file metadata. We try to get the size type, the timestamp. So these are different tools that we can use. We can also check for file type and entropy. We, we detect the packing. Uh, we detect. Uh, there are multiple tools available. P Studio is quite popular. We can also extract the string. This is very popular technique. Sometimes what happens is there are some tools available which can extract the strings from the malware samples like domain name, URL. And uh, strings is, of course, very important tool. Floss is also very important tool for this. Then we can detect the obfuscation packing. Although we don't do this a lot, in, in the static malware analysis, but uh, we scan for domains, we analyze import uh, functions, we compare to the known malware samples as well, right? So these are some of the popular techniques that we perform in static malware analysis. Now, in order to complete this lab, we need the EI car test file. I have already downloaded it. If you want, you can visit EI car test file, type this on Google search bar then you can visit eicar.org and from here you can download the text file most likely your computer will flag as the antivirus i mean as the virus sample so make sure you create an exemption or maybe you can disable your real time threat detection for some time you you make sure it is disabled and then you download it now um, the task is to first to scan the result on, onto the system and then we can also submit it to the uh, sandbox machines like any run or uh, thread zone tool. Okay, so let's do it. I have a virus total here. Okay, uh, what I can do is basically I can actually choose a file or I can drag and drop the file as well. Um, this is my EI car sample file. The moment I submit, 66 out of 68 antivirus software flag this as the malicious file. Remember, this is just a test file. Uh, you know, you can also see some of the uh, strings saying that it's like a dummy virus that trigger an antivirus engine to react. Okay, so this is definitely an infected an infected machine, uh, infected sample. You can see it's malicious. You can also find the hash value of it, right? Once you go into detail, you also get the hash. SHA-256, SHA-1, MD5. Remember, the beauty is even if you don't have the sample, you just have a string and you submit this here, you will get the same result. You see this? It again detected it as EI card text file, right? That's the benefit of hash value. Now, this also gives you the metadata. If you remember, uh, we talked about metadata and everything. So it also gives you the metadata, magic number, uh, and uh, SSD, and uh, multiple other information, different names associated with this, EI car, EI car text, malicious code, and everything, right? We also see some relation and behavior details as well. These are some other behavior from other sandbox solution, execution, persistence information, uh, you can see if it is persistent in nature or not, uh, different other technique, file system, other parameter, what traffic it's been originated with. So you can see different connections, uh, TCP port, traffic, a lot of information, right? Now I can also analyze this on another uh, malware analysis uh, tool, a sandboxing tool, uh, that's thread zone, okay? So I can come here and I can submit this file on thread zone. 
uh, I have an option of going for either static scan or dynamic scan. I'll go for static static scan and uh, I have an option of private submission or public. So this will enable the meta field to make your submission private. So it won't be shared across. Okay. So let's launch this scan. You get the almost similar information with the MD5 value, SHA value and SHA256. It's taking some time. Awesome. Can you check? Can you see this? We have SHA value and other information. We can also see some string. This is the only string because remember, if you look at this, you know, EI car file, there is. So if you see the string of this malware sample, which is EI car dot text, there's nothing much inside, right? So that's why this is the only string or valuable data. Uh, I mean, it could be IP address, domain name, hash value, anything. But in our case, it's a test malware sample. So we just have this in, in the data. And for future, we can also create the Yara rules to detect any site or any, any type of malware sample. And this will help us to create the Yara rule. All right. So I hope this was useful. We'll catch you in the next lab.